got, are we good with the mic? Test one, two, three. Good afternoon, you all. How are you guys doing today? I get the privilege of being able to talk to you right after lunch. So the goal is to try to keep you all awake. If I don't keep you awake, just go ahead and fall asleep and I'll see you and I'll call you out. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I hope you guys are having a fantastic uh, um, event here at Sales Connect. This is actually my second year here. My name is Mario Martinez and I'm the Regional Vice President of Sales here at PGI. Uh, for those of you who don't know who PGI is, we are actually the largest pure play collaboration and services provider in the world. Uh, as a backdrop, we've hosted over 300 million virtual meetings in uh, over 150 countries with over 1.2 billion people. We're a publicly traded company, so we're not a small flyby of any sort. Uh, 2,300 employees worldwide. That's PGI. Uh, I like to think of us as one of the best kept secrets in the marketplace. Not many of us have heard of PGI. How many of you have heard of PGI before? Oh, okay, great. We got about at least a third of the room. Great. Well, uh, excited to be here with all of you guys. I do have one thing that I need your help with, and that is if you do me a favor and please, uh, everybody take out your cell phones and uh, go ahead and open up your LinkedIn application. Take out your cell phones, open up your LinkedIn application, and right at the top, there's a little bar that says search. Everybody know where that's at? Good. Go ahead and type inside there, Mario Martinez, M-A-R-I-O space M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z. Go ahead and put that inside there. And you should see my picture pop up. Go ahead and click on my profile. And do me a favor, go ahead and click connect. <laughs> so uh, I didn't know this when uh, I think it was De Mike or Jonathan had said that your goal is to connect with five people here. Let's make that a goal. I didn't know that when I, this was actually planned and you could ask LinkedIn marketing folks that I was gonna have you do this. Uh, there's actually a separate reason why I'm having you do that. And I'll tell you about that in a second, about this little contest we had going on within our organization. And thank you all, 100 and some odd folks that are going to help me win this particular contest. So I'll tell you about that in a second. Uh, so I'm excited to be here with all of you guys. Uh, and I, I want, want you to take some time to think about uh, your current sales program that you have going on right now. You may or may not have implemented social selling within your organization. Uh, but if you have, uh, one of the things I want you to thinking about is do you feel this way? Do you feel dissatisfied with the current social program that you have rolled out within the organization? And if, it's, if you're just thinking about rolling out a social selling program, the next question I want you to ask yourself is, is do you feel dissatisfied with your sales program uh, in, uh, uh, that, you've, that you currently have today? And that's maybe the reason why you're sitting here in the room looking at how you can uh, drive more sales. So as we think about um, this particular um, session today, what are you going to get out of today? Well, there's five things that you're going to get out of today. And uh, here are the five things that, that you're going to see me talk about throughout today. It's going to be very, very fast, and we'll leave some time for Q&A. But the other thing I want you watching specifically and making sure you take particular note of, most people who see this picture right here do a little chuckle. Uh, and the picture beforehand, most people do a little chuckle as well. Uh, and so these, all the imagery that we have in this presentation, all the videos, the music that you just heard, those are all things that we have used in our social selling program in the launch here in North America. We're the fourth region uh, within PGI to, to do that, and I'm also the executive sponsor um, uh, for that particular program. Uh, also in the room, I want to introduce to you some of my colleagues that are here with me as well. So if you have any questions about our program, what we've done, you can find them if you can't get to me. Christine Pavlon, please raise your hand. She's our vice president of sales for the central areas. Uh, Steve Valentine, raise your hand. He's our VP of Northeast and our vice president uh, over, and general manager over our Canada, uh, Thomas Boutier. He is over here with us as well. So if you have any questions and you can't get to me, you can certainly talk to any of these folks here as well. So uh, these are the things you're going to get out of today. Why we had the need to change within our own organization to adopt a social selling culture. The role of the executive sponsor. And we spent some time, I've, I've talked one on one with a lot of you guys about what does this mean and how do you play, this play in this role? Uh, how to drive 100% rep adoption. Now that's interesting because people have asked, well, what does that mean? I'll tell you what that means in a second. But yes, we have truly driven 100% rep adoption within our social selling program here in North America. And we've got about 130 folks deployed here in North America right now. Uh, and how to make social selling fun and then our results. And nothing is more important than talking about the results that we have within, within an organization, whatever we roll out. So let's talk about why the need for change. Uh, how many of you are sales folks or sales leadership here in the room? Raise your hand. 
Okay, almost the majority of the room. Well, here's, here's the thing. As you look at these eight things, there, I don't believe there's anything here on this particular list that is different or unique to PGI than what, is, what you're faced with inside of your organization. Uh, and so here are the things that we were challenged by as an organization, as a leadership team. We sat down, we want, want, wanted to take time to review what we could do to be able to increase the deal size, uh, sell the different lines of businesses, because we do sell to at least five different lines of businesses for, with our product set. But the things that we're going to focus on today is number six, seven, and eight. Uh, we were 100% traditional sales-driven culture. What do I mean by traditional? We focused clearly and fo solely on uh, things related to KPIs like cold calls and email blasts, networking events, when I came on board a little over a year ago. We also had very little, if any, social engagement in the field. Uh, we are, PGI is a 25-year-old company, but we were a legacy telecommunications company that over the last five years have transformed into a SaaS organization. And so with that, we've taken our people with us, and as a result of having these individuals with us, uh, telecom sales folks traditionally were not used to looking at, to selling on uh, social media and or using social media, especially with the, 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 the teams that we had built up over the many years. And we have a great tenure at our organization. So we had very little of that going on. And then we also, I, I mentioned to you a bunch of our stats uh, earlier about the size of PGI. Uh, we're one of the best kept secrets in the marketplace. Given our size and our, and, and our um, uh, of PGI, the funny part is, is many people haven't heard of us. And that's okay. Uh, here's the thing that we knew. We have competitors that uh, are much larger in size, and they're not pure play collaboration providers, they're also equipment vendors as well. Uh, they've spent their time selling, they have a thousand product SKUs versus our 10 product SKUs. And so what we knew is, as we compared us to our competitors, there was one thing we knew with 100% certainty. I would never, our organization would never ever out market or out advertise some of these large competitors, right? Uh, and even though we only had 10 product SKUs, they had a thousand and they had a much bigger spend in marketing and advertising. So what we did know though, is that if we adopted a social selling culture, Culture, we could absolutely out social sell our competitors and we're seeing benefits and we'll talk about that in just a second and what we also knew was is there was we were at the point that we could no longer get caught with our pants down right we can no longer enter into an opportunity where individuals are not equipped with information that they need to be able to sell uh, effectively inside of an organization so let's talk a little bit about the role of the executive sponsor uh, and I, I want to tell you that we didn't wake up one day and say, let's launch Sales Navigator. And then all of a sudden, boom, we launched Sales Navigator and we've had massive success. No, that's not what happened. In fact, last year this same time, uh, I was the only one from our organization that was attended Sales Connect. Here today, you've got five people that are sitting in the room from PGI that are my uh, peer sales leaders that have now looked at this and said, wait a minute, we're actually having massive success through social and driving business. How do we now keep this going and keep the momentum moving? Uh, and so what we had to do when I came on board, I spent a lot of time talking to my peers, those folks who are here in the room, uh, looking at how can we create some tactical social awareness program. It was foreign. It was new. It was different. Uh, we also, one of the things I did was is our, our then VP of marketing, uh, he actually owned the top most, most viewed profiles uh, uh, on LinkedIn for PGI with 2,300 employees. And I looked at him and I, was, and I said, uh, one day I said, you know what, let's have a little competition because he's all about social. Let's see who can get the most viewed profile, uh, most, uh, comp, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, most profile views for PGI and let's compete. And we started talking about that amongst the executive team. We started copying our president or CEO on, on who, was, who was outranking who. Then it started infiltrating into the sales organization and we started asking them on specific trainings, hey guys, could you do me a favor? Click on this link right here in the IM chat session. Nobody knew what they were doing, but they were clicking on it. They were going to each of our profiles and all of a sudden now we started creating this organic competition. What it really meant was 100% it was a popularity contest, right? Who could be more popular, him or I? And then all of a sudden, more people started jumping in on this, and our salespeople started jumping in uh, from EMEA, from Asia Pack, other executives. We even have uh, some of the folks in the room here today that are part of the top 15 most commonly viewed profiles now from never being even on the top 100, right? So it, it's been, it's, uh, this, what we did was pretty fun to be able to get this to where we wanted to go. Uh, and the other thing we started doing is, is um, 
And we started running uh, different types of social selling programs. So my background, I actually did social selling before. I trained on that. And so I started with the first social selling training program just to create awareness. It started out with 20 people, 25 people. And then those 20, 25 people sent it over to the next 10, to the next 15, to the next 20. And by the sixth training, we had like 150 people on this. So it was organically starting to create this awareness campaign that we were doing. And at the same time, I started advocating with my peers. We got to do something different. Can, what are your results for cold calling? What's happening? And it was different. It was foreign for, uh, for a, a, lot of this, a lot of the conversations that we had. And then we also started looking for funding. So that was the first six months, September through uh, uh, February. Then one day in, in March, I get a phone call from our uh, executive vice president of sales and marketing over our SaaS division, Scott Tapp. And uh, I got an IM from his assistant says, Scott wants to talk to you right away. And I was like, oh God, <laughs> what does this mean? Is this good or bad? And I wrote, is this good or bad? And she was like, two minutes, that's all he needs. I was like, well, that's all you need to fire somebody, right? So uh, anyways, I said, okay, I'm available right now. So he picks up the phone, he calls me and he says, hey Mario, you're Mr. LinkedIn guy. I've got a big PO sitting here that I have to sign for X hundred thousands of dollars to be able to roll out Sales Navigate across the organization. In two minutes or less, give me the elevator pitch on why I should buy this. Well, that two-minute conversation turned into a 20-minute long conversation. And at the end, I remember him saying this, OK, Mario, here's what I'm going to do. You sold me. I'm, I'm, I'm in, 100% in. I see what you've been doing with the program, with some of the things you've been doing, all the different conversations that are taking place. Here's what I'm going to have you do. If so great, Master Yoda, that's the picture of Yoda, if so great at this social selling, I need you to sign up to be the executive sponsor and to prove out an ROI. Then I was like, ah, oh, crap, what did I get myself into? I didn't mean to do all this, now I gotta sign up for a full, another full-time job. Nonetheless, I said, let's go. And we had 45 days from, de from the time we signed to deployment that we had to do these eight things. And we developed a strategy plan. It was about a 40-page PowerPoint uh, that took us through every one of these elements that you see here on the board to be able to roll out this entire social selling strategy program. So what did that strategy look like? Well, here are three different phases, some of which we're currently involved uh, in the phase right now. Phase one, May to August. It was a definitive time frame of all the things we were going to do. We had to assemble all the resources from marketing to sales operations to sales training to sales enablement. Uh, and all of my peers across the country, uh, we needed to be able to get everybody's buy-in that this is the strategy that we were going to roll forward with. Uh, and so the first phase was looking at how we can teach our folks to create a professional brand and find and connect with the right people. And we, we developed training associated with that to be able to roll that out. And I'll talk to you a little bit about the training. Uh, and I, I want to give you a temperature check as well. When we roll this out, I actually got a phone call from my very good friend here, Christine Pavlon, uh, who's in the room with me. And she said, look, look, I'm all for this social selling thing. I just need to know, how much training are you really going to do and take these folks out of the field, right? And so I want you, I say that uh, because Christine is one of our most successful sales leaders within the organization based upon selling on a traditional based model. But it wasn't easy breezy. Right? We had to sell this to the, our, our, uh, my fellow counterparts, be able to get them to adopt and think differently and, and accept what we were about to do, and or if we couldn't get them to accept, at least get them to ride along and see if we had progress. So that was phase one. Phase two, pardon me, was the August to November timeframe, which we're currently in. Uh, and that was teaching our reps how to engage with insight. So great, you're looking at people, you've saved them as a lead inside of Navigator, you're watching them on Twitter, so what? What do you do next? What do you say to them? Uh, how do you share valuable information? What's important to them? And so we took them through trainings. And I'll tell you another thing that we did as well to make this successful. And then teaching them how to build some of the strong relationships uh, to be able to prospect. And then also what we knew is when we signed the contract, we knew that we were about to GA a product in the next four months and release it to the marketplace, a sales acceleration tool. And so in the strategy, we built in right from the very get-go phase three, which is what we're currently in right now. Uh, and that is the use of video uh, in your sales process. And so what we knew is that we were going to launch this product and we needed to time all of the things we were doing with social to bring it together with the product that we were about to release to the market so that our reps were mature enough and ready to be able to utilize video technology inclusive with their social selling. And so uh, we, we launched the, 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 the product last month in September. And we're currently utilizing our own technology internally. And I'll show you about that in just a second as well. So you all want to know, drop the mic. How did you create 100% rep adoption? What did you do to do that, right? 
First, it was the sponsor. Second was develop a strategy. Next was look at how we put together a program that offered them a learning management center, right? Uh, and so here's what's important. You, you launched LinkedIn Sales Navigator. There is a learning uh, center inside of Navigator, but guess what? It wasn't a way that I could drive people back to that learning management center or le learning center and be able to see whether or not they were engaging with the content. More specifically, uh, they didn't know uh, through the learning center inside of Navigator how to customize specific content like an in-mail or a message, or a referral request, and the value propositions that you wanted to give by business unit. So this is one of our own products that we sell to the marketplace called iMeet Central. And with iMeet Central, it's a workspace. Uh, it took me 30 minutes to put this whole entire uh, um, uh, space, workspace together. And what you're going to see on the far left-hand side, there's various different project folders that we categorize. And so here were uh, folders that we created that itemized specifically best practices for in-mails, best practices for messages and referrals. Uh, we included all of our group discussions in our chat, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, uh, all the things, the graphics that they needed to be able to improve their social profile, like the banners at the top for your LinkedIn profile, all that was done there. We gave access to marketing, sales operations, corporate communication, so that everybody was seeing everything that we were doing and everybody was on the same page. Every training that we hosted, we put the recording inside of this particular center. And then the best part is, you can't see this little cutoff at the bottom on the left-hand side, was we created this, uh, inside the tool is the ability to create discussions. It's like a big giant chat chat uh, area for, for your folks. We actually included our LinkedIn sales rep, the management team, our product consultant that was helping us, and all the folks that were helping us implement. We included them inside of this, dis inside of this workspace, and then we had these discussions. And every time we launched a discussion, we always linked back to something of value inside the workspace. And that's important to understand. For example, if I said to you, why are you not, here are the recent KPIs, by the way, there's a KPI section, why are you not utilizing in-mails to get a 20 to 50% return rate? By the way, here is the link that you can click on to be able to get a best practice on the types of in-mails that you could write for a marketing line of business buyer, for a sales line of business buyer, for an IT line of business buyer. Boom, 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 they were all there. And uh, so we utilized this, and then we also had included RSS feeds. Is Jill Rowley in the room? Jill? No? OK. So we included RSS feeds from different blogs. And this was an example of when I took the screenshot of, of the one that was up there. So that every time they went back in this workspace, they had from Sales for Life, as an example, a company that produces a lot of great content. Uh, they had um, the ability to be able to look at some of these things and get their own tips by doing their own research in one central repository. The other thing you see here on these group discussions I think is really critical. We became our own marketing engine internally. Look, if you're going to market externally and you're going to use uh, imagery and you're going to use keywords, you're going to use things that are going to wrap people in, why would you not do that internally? And so if you look here, it may be hard to read, but on the screen here, you see a, a group discussion right in the middle. It says, speed date, learning to engage with insights. Extra, extra, read all about it. LinkedIn SSI score now available. Uh, and then you see, oh man, so awesome, must read SSI pilot. Well, these were catchy uh, uh, phrases or subject lines that were sent out of these group chats, which hit their email addresses, right? When they, when they came into the whole system, it hit their emails. And these are the things that were showing up. In addition to that, as soon as they opened these emails up, right on the front was President Bush saying, can I get a what, what, right? Or you see three guys with their, their pants around their ankles. Now, would you not stop to look at this and say, well, what, what is this all about? Yeah, most likely you would, right? And so that's how we were able to capture them in. In addition to that, how do we know that it worked? Well, inside of the tool, uh, iMeet Central, we have the ability to be able to see how many page views were taking place uh, on a monthly, daily uh, basis by user, et cetera. So here's an example of when we started our program. We started back in September. I had launched the tool in April. We launched Navigator in May. So as you can see here, a massive spike, which has continued on through September. Unfortunately, my presentation was due before the end of September, so I don't have September stats inside here, but it's the same exact curve. It continues to rise. We went from 576 page views with 130 people all the way up to 10,000 or 9 to 10,000 page views per month by our entire channel. Why? Because we became social internal, which in effect drove social selling externally. We also did something very unique, um, standard training. Every two weeks, we had training for the first um, four months of the program. And then we also did something that was very different. Uh, what I also knew was is that as an executive sponsor, I knew I had to take control uh, and lead and help show people the way. And you can do that on trainings when you've got 100 people on a training. You may not be able to get the mass, right? So what I did was is I, I launched uh, what's called office hours. How, you remember, how many of you remember office hours in college? 
All right, the value of office hours in college was to go and sit with a professor, get some extra insight and time to be able to learn a particular subject, or if you were like me, you sit with a professor hoping that he would think that you're trying to learn and give you a better grade. Uh, <laughs> so what I did was is every Friday I would launch an office hour uh, for 30 minutes, 100% voluntary. And you'd have anywhere from five to 25 people show up at office hours. And this was 100% their time to ask questions of me as a social seller, uh, as a sponsor in the organization. And if they didn't have anything, every office hours, I had a new tip and trick that we didn't launch in the discussion board. We launched live. So if you wanted to get the inside scoop, this was a very elite thing. You had to come to the, to the training. We also did um, uh, uh, recent discussion groups that kind of dripped information to the crowd and said, hey, this week we're going to have a special tip. Specifically, how can you use LinkedIn to connect to your competitors and then figure out who they're selling to? Want to know more? Join office hours on Friday. Right? So those are some of the things that we did to be able to drive attendance, and I think that was very effective for our program. Of course, we did uh, the measuring and coaching. Here are the, the, the standard KPIs that we all measure to. Our sales leaders uh, get this report on a monthly basis, and then they go through and they work with the sales coaching checklist, which I'll show you in a second, and they work with each individual rep. Are, do you have the, uh, are you even using the tool? And by the way, we adopted a policy, use it or lose it. After 30 days, for the first 60 days, we, we gave them uh, the period to be able to use it. After 60 days and 30 days thereafter, we check it. If you do not have the minimum standard to be able to log in on a monthly basis, guess what? You no longer deserve the tool. And the other 25 to 50 people that we have that are sitting there waiting from, on it from our different channels, like our SMB channel, they're now getting the, the, the license. You snooze, you lose. And that's created a sense of, I need to utilize the tool to be able to be effective. Uh, we also managed to our SSIs as well, broke this out. This is, these are actual dashboards that we launched to the, to the sales management team. And then here's the, the coaching checklist. Every time we launched the KPI document uh, through our work, I Meet Central workspace and created a group discussion that here are the KPIs, every person from our executive vice president all the way down to the rep received the KPI documentation. And every single time we launched the spreadsheet to be able to show them, by the way, we need that integrated into Salesforce, Please, LinkedIn. Nonetheless, that's my, that's my one plug in there for, for uh, integration. But nonetheless, every time we launched this, we would also attach a link that said, sales managers, here's how you coach your reps. And they would be able to click on this and have instant access back from the workspace that we had. We also worked with marketing and, and sales enablement to include content specifically that they can share uh, out on social media, as well as social news and tips that goes out on a weekly basis now enters in uh, the next phase of our strategy. And this was social video. So what I'm gonna take you through is some of the things that are happening in the marketplace. Once you understand some of these uh, particular stats here, you will then understand how we utilize this and leverage this internally within our own organization. And so we knew, and the stats all show, that video is where it's at. How many of you look up, have Facebook account? Okay, when you go to Facebook, does the video automatically play? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? yes? Yes, it does. It automatically plays, right? That change was made on Facebook. It was recently done on Twitter. And so the video is now the, the highest engagement factor out on, out on social and, and the internet. 74% of all traffic by 2017 will be video. We also knew that if you utilize video in email, it can boost open rates. How many of you are maybe sales enablement or sales operations? You send out a, a okay, great. When you send out, are you tracking your open rate for your newsletters? Most of you probably have about a 40% or less, maybe 50% open rate, agree? And then on top of that, the click-through rate is even lower than that, right? So how do you get people to be able to open up the content that you want to share with them that they need to be able to see so they can advance their sales process? Well, this is that concept of utilizing video technology embedded into uh, emails and or newsletters and or blogs and those types of things. Uh, so we also knew that just using the word video in a subject line had a 19% uh, higher rate uh, of op open rate uh, than not utilizing that. So here are some of the things that we knew. And we also knew as well that an executive uh, would rather, 59% of executives would rather watch a, a short video than read text. These are studies that were done. So what was behind the whole thing, the idea behind video? Clearly the science behind video is you can see someone conveying emotion, 
You can see someone's facial expressions. You can see the movement and how they're getting into it or not getting into it. Maybe it's a dud video. Maybe it's not a, a dud video, right? You can see all these things. So what we were trying to do was is take the product that we were launching to the marketplace and then utilize that same exact technology with the same exact principles, the same exact best practices, and do that exactly what we can do internally and drive um, video engagement through social. So what I want to show you next uh, is, a, um, is a video. And this is utilizing the iMeet Sales Accelerator platform uh, that we launched last month. And this is actually a social selling tip that I, I personally recorded. I put out on social media, and we also sent this around to our entire sales organization uh, to be able to look at how you can stand out from the crowd when you are connecting with someone on LinkedIn. Because one of the things we did teach them is, is after you've connected with somebody, it wasn't just enough just to say, or, or just to accept the connection and now you're connected. What do you do with that connection, right? And that's the key to the social selling is you've got to do something. How do you foster it? How do you nurture it? How do you develop a relationship? How do you build trust? So through the sales acceleration tool that we launched, again, I meet sales accelerator, through that particular technology, we were able to utilize this exact technology to be able to teach our reps on what to do with LinkedIn through social video. Video. Let's watch this. Hey guys, so here's your social selling tip for the day. So you just connected with somebody on LinkedIn. Rather than sending a thank you message for just connecting, why not send them a video message? Let them see your face to the name. Say something like this. Hey Chris, glad we connected on LinkedIn today. Super excited to learn from you and to uh, network with you. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. I'll talk to you soon. If you do that, then now you can send them a message directly from Sales Accelerator. Here on your screen, you're gonna see that there is a screen showing what do you do next? You wanna share that video. You want to click on the LinkedIn button at the bottom. Bottom. Once you click on that LinkedIn button at the bottom, you're going to see a new window pops up, and you're going to check the send to individual, put in the person's name, in this case, Chris, and the subject line, thanks for connecting. Message, just wanted to send you this video message, thanks, Chris. Let them see a personal name to a face and, a vo and, and with the voice. Now, the next thing you'll do, see if your contact watched the video. And you can look at that through the Sales Accelerator uh, analytics tool. And finally, you'll be able to have a chance to see if they're forwarding that video out that you may be sending to them or to any particular type of buyer. That is your social selling tip of the day on what to do once you've connected with somebody on LinkedIn. That's how you stand out from the crowd. I Meet Sales Accelerator lets you create highly engaging video presentations for your prospects. With just a few clicks, you can record yourself on video and narrate your slides. Then send a link of the presentation to your prospects and track the results. I Meet Sales Accelerator features robust analytics that show when your prospect opened the presentation and what content they viewed. You can also get email alerts every time your prospect views the presentation. And all the data gets sent to your Salesforce account to help you track your activity. I Meet Sales Accelerator. Engage your customers, track the results, close more deals. So that was the video that we actually sent out to our sales organization to teach them what to do after they connected with somebody on LinkedIn. And this was post now, the same exact information that we taught them how to do three or four months earlier, which was once you connected with somebody, was the message that you send that person as a thank you. And we posted all that content inside of our um, uh, I Meet Central, um, uh, the, the I Meet Central workspace. And then subsequently, now we changed the way we started to engage with them. So the first three or four months was all about group chat. It was all about group discussions. It was all about catchy um, uh, videos, catchy um, uh, imagery. It was all about um, uh, communicating and training. And then we switched over to now video engagement. And the whole idea is, is that we never keep one thing going the same way for a long period of time. Change it up. 
And that's the idea. It's no different for those that are marketers in the room. You're not constantly doing the exact same type of content every single week, every single day, every single month. You're changing it up to be able to attract your buyers. Well, our buyers are our internal folks, our social sellers. And so this was an example of what we did to be able to help them learn how to stand out from the crowd. And subsequently, of course, it allowed them to be able to see how to utilize the product externally as well, because they all got saw that it was published, and then everybody started sharing it across the organization. Uh, so the next thing that we uh, want to talk to you about is how we made social fun. And this is an important aspect that's, uh, that I think I, I've spoken to a lot of leaders here in the, in the, in the audience, uh, sorry, uh, here at Sales Connect, and they're saying, well, you know, we rolled out social selling, we rolled out Sales Navigator, but we're not getting the rep adoption. It's just kind of like, yeah, it's just okay. Well, how do you make it fun? Well, again, here are some of the different imagery uh, that we used with our communications to our sales reps. Uh, you see here, and this is just this plain old funny. I, mean, I don't know, I thought you guys might get a chuckle out of this, but Betty White with the Jedi Knight Swords, come on, right? And so this is some of the things that we did. Where did we find it at? How did we develop these ideas? It literally was myself and a couple other people that were going out on Google, thinking of a different theme, and being able to attach a picture to the theme, period. It took us 10 minutes at most uh, to be able to think of these, uh, these things uh, and, and be able to capture people in. And some of these things, like for example, can I get a what what, that is now this whole concept of what, what? That, that concept is actually being used on different sales meetings, sales calls. People are actually using the term what, what, right? Did it result from this or did it result from people using it? Who knows, but the fact of the matter is that theme continues to get carried forward. And, 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 we're, and we're onto something because we attracted something that was of interest to them. Uh, the other thing here, as I mentioned, the discussions, this is actually a snapshot here right before I had it, my presentation was due to LinkedIn from the discussion board. You'll note that out of the three discussions, which was every couple days, September 24th, 21st, 17th, it wasn't just me. It was sales leaders or sales reps that were creating discussions uh, about what was going on, something that they found, something that happened as a result of using I Meet Sales Accelerator. They closed three brand new deals that were completely stale in the pipeline because they couldn't get a hold of the guy or the gal uh, for uh, months. And they were sending emails, calling, phone calling, cold calling, trying to get this person, do the executive assistant, showing up to the door, but then they send a video message and all of a sudden the person responds and like, that's super cool, let's talk. That's very different, right? So these are some of the best practices that were uh, contained inside here. And as the rep had them, since they knew that everybody in the world was copied on these group discussions, guess what they did? They educated and shared, but they knew that they were going to get, anybody? Recognition? Recognition. You guys with me? Are we asleep? All right, so they knew they were gonna get some level of recognition because of the things that they were doing uh, inside of there. We also ran a, a contest every month from the time that we launched, June, July, August, September, we ran multiple contests that, uh, that surrounded uh, focusing in on people's behavior. And that's super critical. It's not about the results. It wasn't how much business you closed. It wasn't about the sale that you closed. Guess what, you have a comp plan for that. That's how you get rewarded for that. But what we wanted to drive was behavior. Things like, how many accounts did you save? How many unique logins did you do for that given month? Uh, and what's interesting is, is, is that we actually ran this as individual contests, we, um, uh, and I'll tell you about some of the, the, the prizes that we gave, and we also ran this as team events. So on average, we had 10 to 12 teams that were playing anywhere between uh, 10 to 15 people on a team, and they had to compete as a team, and as a team, collectively, they had to get an average of, let's just say, 15 average logins to Sales Navigator on a monthly basis, and when they did that, if they were the top performing team, they got a raffle ticket to be entered into a drawing. I'll talk about the drawing in just a second. Uh, and then in addition to that, even if you were not on the number one team or number two or number three th team, which we had first, second, third place, usually in most cases, uh, sometimes first through fifth, you could still win if you were the number one performer but you were on a sucky team, right? Uh, and so we made it easy for them to be able to win. And it got, became this thing uh, of like, well, well, what's my team doing now? Well, who's the person? Because we couldn't uh, publish the, the, the KPIs outside of every two weeks just because of how manual it was. And so people were like, what's my team doing right now? I would get these emails. I need to know if everybody else is pulling their weight on my team. I'm like, oh, geez, oh, well, wait two weeks. No, 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 I don't want to lose. The, uh, the VP would call me out. We don't want to lose. We're trying to win this thing, right? So we created this team camaraderie, this team competition, and we mixed up the teams. Uh, for example, our October launch uh, for our contest uh, was the first time 
in North America that we launched our, uh, a, a contest that surrounded measuring SSI. All the previous months was 100% measuring behavior that helped grow the SSI. Does that make sense? And so um, one of the things that um, we also did was we made the, the competitions fun. Uh, what you're, if you're looking down right now, I suggest that you don't look down because what's about to come out your head are some things that are flying around the audience. So what, you, what we did was is we also did giveaways and we did random things. Go ahead. Uh, we did random things. Watch out. Heads up, guys. Things are flying out at you. And it came left and right all over the place. Footballs, uh, 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 things that you could wear, LinkedIn shirts, uh, hats, uh, PGI-related stuff. Uh, so these are some... Oh, <laughs> I said look up. <laughs> Make sure you're not looking down. But these are the types of things that were just like... Constant, move, 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 fast, right? We made things happen all the time very, very quickly, as, and, and we always were changing things up. And, you know, people, even if they didn't win the big prize, but they got, i.e., a football, right? It was a cool thing, right? They were still feeling like they won something. Uh, in addition to that, we also created a social selling spotlight. Uh, and so we took this on a weekly basis. One of our executives, thank you guys for helping out with that. One of our executives would be able would take the time to do an interview. It'd be anywhere between eight to 10 minute interview of a social selling success story. And so uh, this got published in our newsletter, uh, nationwide newsletter. It also got published on our workspace. Uh, and so these, these social sellers would be um, recognized in front of all the leadership from marketing to corporate comm to sales enablement to the actual sales leadership to sales engineering. And they've been recognized uh, nationwide uh, for their success. And what did we highlight as a success story? Was it a close one deal? No. It was behavior that, that was the right things. For example, in this particular instance, Matt Crispin, he's one of the reps in my organization, Matt actually looked at a, a, a contact that he was trying to get to and saw that our CIO was connected to the CIO here locally at an organization uh, in the West area. And so what did he do? He sent over a referral request. And then he figured out that there were 22 other companies that our CIO was connected to in the West area. So what else did he do? He sent the same exact referral request to a different, maybe it was a different line of business buyer, using the in-mails that we had located in the workspace, or the refer sorry, not emails, referral request language. And he sent that 22 times to our CIO to, to 22, for 22 different people. And what did our CIO do? What do you think he did? Take a guess. He made the referral 22 times, right? And so that's how we started ad adopting this social culture as we told our executives, look, expect that you're going to get a request. And oh, by the way, it's not going to be a cheesy request coming for a referral request because we're going to pre-populate -pre some content that they're going to be able to use for you to be able to help uh, uh, create a business case. So that, that content's going to go along. We taught them what to do. We just didn't leave it up to one training and say, hope you got it right. We also gave away money. Every month there would be anywhere, uh, I think we gave away at least $600 to $1,000 every month. Uh, some person would win 100 bucks, somebody would win 200, somebody would win 50 bucks. Everybody would win something. And then we also had two major raffles, one of which we had and one of which is still going on. One was an iWatch and the other one was an Android watch. And so all the tickets for the team competitions, you got these tickets put into the fishbowl, uh, and you worked together as a team, and you got 10 tickets, five tickets, uh, three tickets, first, second, third place, et cetera, and you got entered into uh, the drawing here. So let's talk about the results of our social selling program. There's four things that we're gonna show you. I'll show you the fourth one in a second. In the last, since May when we launched to the present time, scratch that, to middle of September, because we had to pull this data for prior to the, uh, prior to the event, we've attributed either opportunity close, uh, opportunity open, or opportunity, uh, sorry, opportunity open and closing for the closing process, over $2 million in annual contract value. That's ACV, annual contract value. We've attributed over 33 deals that have closed, one with 350,000 in ACV in four and a half months, and 386,000 in closed loss. We also had an 85% growth on SSI from 36 to 66 within our organization. And when we talk about driving rep adoption, let me bring it all back and cir circle it back here for you guys. We on average have 16 average monthly logins per rep in North America logging into Sales Navigator. Now how many business days are there in a month? 
22. Approximately 21, 22, right? So we have almost every single day our reps are getting into the tool, engaging with insights, researching information, finding information, and leveraging that to be able to grow their business. And one of the very important stats that was the most concerned to our Stratcom team uh, was we actually were able to attribute a 50% increase in PGI shares on LinkedIn. Okay, a 50% increase from the time we started the program with the awareness program in January through August. That is huge from brand impressions perspective from if you're a marketer, right? That is exactly the type of program that you wanted to launch. Now, we're gonna make it better because some of the things that we're looking at now is launching like employee advocacy applications like from R Factor or for, from Everyone Social. These are some of the tools that we're considering uh, that we are going to be able to roll something out as a nationwide or even a worldwide program that will allow our folks to be able to easily share information on Twitter uh, and, and LinkedIn, which are the two platforms from a B2B selling perspective. And so those are the things that we're looking at doing as part of our next phase because we're seeing all this great stuff happening. Imagine this, if you're a marketer, we were able to see a 50% increase on brand impressions, likes, and shares on LinkedIn by not having an employee advocacy application like an R Factor, as an example, right? That is phenomenal success that we've been able to breed out just by utilizing the tools that I told you about. So, all in all, I spoke a little longer than what I was supposed to. I apologize, but I'm super excited that we had this chance to show you how we literally dropped the mic and created 100% rep engagement, and we're excited about our program. So. That's the end of the discussion, and there is an opportunity for Q&A right now. There's a mic in the center of the room. Feel free to line up and uh, go ahead and uh, uh, line up for, for the mic, please. Hey, thank <clears throat> this thing on? Hey, great, thank you. So I've only got about 280 questions here, so <laughs> I'll uh, pick the one most relevant to the discussion point and try to find you guys afterwards for some of the other stuff. With regards to one of your first slides, it talked about the personal branding versus a, a professional branding versus a resume personally, which I get. And as a company, I get it. As an individual user, obviously the sales navigator license you own, you're paying for it. The LinkedIn page is mine. So did you have to battle that much with these guys? Because it's, well, this is my LinkedIn page, so I'll just keep my free account and you can keep your license because eventually I'm gonna need another job anyway, sort of thing, you know, right? Um, how, did you, how did you deal with that? Because at the end of the day, it is their LinkedIn page. Yeah, gr great question. Uh, so the answer to that question is, is, first off, we had no problem whatsoever. Because here's what reps knew. In the first sets of trainings, we had to get them to buy off on the concept that, guess what? 60% of the process, of the sales process, I'm uh, sorry, of the education process is already done prior to a customer calling you, right? And in some stats, they're actually showing it's 80%. Uh, I'll subscribe to the 60%. That having been said, if they hit your profile and you look like you're out looking for a job, are they interested in buying from you, yes or no? Right? And that was a very simple discussion. And then what, also what we did was, is we actually launched uh, a, the, the banner graphics for them right up front so they could have something that was like, ooh, cool, new, right? You know, salespeople, that's ooh, cool, right? So they put that on their, on their profile page. And then we also built, uh, if you actually go to my profile, and you read my summary, and you read my PGI uh, work section, you'll see if you go around and looking at other PGI reps that a bunch of people have taken an either A, mirrored, or B, slightly modified. So we made it very easy for them to be able to reach their intended buyer. We also provided them the keywords that were important to our industry, web casting, web conferencing, audio conferencing, those types of things uh, to, be, uh, to be able to make it easier so they can put those keywords in the, in the right sections so that when someone looked for a web conferencing provider in Chicago, as an example, uh, Christine would pop up uh, or anybody on her team would pop up on LinkedIn. Does that make sense? Thanks. This is a pretty similar question to what he had. You're saying use or lose, and again, with having it be your own private LinkedIn page, how did you handle any reps that didn't want to opt in? You talked about that a little bit, but we come from a sales culture where there's younger people, older people, that just, that's the fact. Social is much more prevalent with the younger crowd than it is with an older crowd. How do you handle the objections from the older crowd? Uh, good question. So um, ours was a little bit easier because most of our employees were expensing back the $49.99 for the premium LinkedIn account. And we told them, you will not be able to expense this back if you are um, allocated a license. And oh, by the way, if you lose your LinkedIn Sales Navigator license because of you not performing, you're still not going to be able to expense back your $49.99. Um, so that instantly drove a change 
in the culture to be able to, to drive that, uh, to, to drive towards usage. And um, as regards to the, the, the uh, when I assume you say older, you're talking about the more tenured, maybe the Gen Y, Gen X, I mean Gen Y and baby boomers. Um, we, we still have some of those folks on our team. Uh, good, good, good example is I have a, gen, a, a, sorry, a baby boomer on my team, and she makes uh, 600 phone calls a month, and she gets 35 new logo appointments. She grew up being trained on how to have a phone voice and how to wrap people in. I also have the millennial on my team who has not been trained in that effective cold calling technique, and majority of our folks don't like to make 600 phone calls, but she does, right? So he's utilizing social selling to get 35 appointments. So you had to highlight um, both things, and then when the, when the, the baby boomers, uh, for example, this individual I'm thinking of, even though she did the cold calling, she never got on the phone call without utilizing LinkedIn to figure out what more could I find out from an in insight perspective to help me build a relationship with the person I'm about to sell to. So whether you use it in advance of, of uh, the prospecting call or middle or end, we didn't care as long as you use the tool to help you advance the sales process. But they weren't afraid of people stealing their relationships, even though you have to still go through the person who owns that relationship. They weren't worried about people going and connecting just for the sake of connecting. I don't think that was a concern. Not from my, my, my I, I, everybody's saying no. No, okay. I don't think that cool. was a concern for us. Okay, cool, thanks. All right, my question is about the profile of the sellers themselves. So are your reps all inside sellers? Are they outside sellers? How does that work? Great question. So on one of those KPI slides, you'll yeah. see that we actually have, um, one of our groups is our EBR team. Mm -hmm. We also have a aquas, pure acquisition team. We also have a pure large base account management and a small base account management, and, oh, partner, yeah, thank you, and our partner reseller and agent channel. So, no, it's, we, we rolled it out across all of North America to all of those different channels that I mentioned to you. Got it. So, and but and, and, and I'll, I will tell you this, uh, for our EBR team, 99% of all their leads are sourced through uh, Sales Navigator. Wow, okay. Got it. So um, are you seeing more success with like large enterprise customers through social selling? Are you seeing it more on the SMB side of the space? Do you guys even look at that? Uh, good question. Um, we are segmenting from a ROI standpoint. We are segmenting just pure dollars at this point in time. We have a couple of groups that we're breaking out how much a revenue attribution is being given towards an individual group. I can't say that we have articulated it down to where, what group is having the most success. Uh, no, we have not got into that level of detail. And quite frankly, I don't think any of our leaders is asking for that. I mean, all of, we have acquisition leaders and, uh, uh, and, and alike in the room here. Uh, I don't, I, I think it's, yeah, I think everybody's, everybody's seeing success. I mean, we, the whole crowd is moving along. Good, thank you. Uh, do we have time for one more question, Julia? We gotta cut it off? Sure you do. Oh. <laughs> From a boomer. <laughs> That's not my fault. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm on this deal the whole way. Uh, in terms of demand generation, are you spending less on that now? Are you planning to spend less on that? That's a great question. Um, so, uh, no, we're not spending less. We're actually reallocating dollars uh, to do things like account-based marketing, going after specific sets of accounts, um, and uh, we're actually driving up development of costs for content um, because content is king. So I wouldn't say we're spending less, and I would not utilize, me personally, I would not utilize uh, you're adopting social selling, and therefore you can cut here. It's you, in order to keep up with the social selling, you have to create the content uh, to create the demand, and then you can start taking some of the dollars okay, you may well, have spent elsewhere. More specifically, how about marketing automation? Uh, are we spending money there, you're saying? Are you spending less? Are you planning to spend less on marketing automation? No, uh, we just oh. actually uh, purchased uh, Eloqua and implemented to that, and so I think the answer to that is no, we've spent enough so far in the last year. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to integrate it all, yeah. All right, guys, uh, I've been cut off. Uh, if I ever want to be invited back to speak again, thank you very much for joining us. Talk to you soon. Thank you.